Tired. Yeah. All right, there we go. Uh, welcome back, everybody, to the post-game press conference from Game 2 of the NCAA Men's Ice Hockey Regional at the Denny Sanford Premier Center here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, we're going to be up first tonight with victorious Minnesota. Minnesota advances to a fourth consecutive regional final uh, with a 3-2 win tonight. Um, in case you missed the announcement earlier, um, there will be some media availability tomorrow as well. And for Minnesota, that will be at 3.30, so back here in, in this uh, very same room. Uh, with that, quick reminder, uh, please make sure your phones and your watches are turned to silent or vibrate. Um, and when asking a question, please ask for the microphone, identify yourself and your organization. Thank you for your cooperation. With that, please join me in welcoming uh, head coach Bob Motzko, along with the student athletes Jackson Nelson and Connor Kurth. Coach, if you wouldn't mind giving us an open sta opening statement to get things moving. Yeah, well, pre pretty simple. If you, if you all watched it, the, the seven minutes of penalty kill, the first 24 minutes kind of put us in a hole. Uh, and um, the good thing out of it was we only gave one up on a, uh, out of that. And, and Justin Close was just outstanding tonight. And, and then we started after, right after the penalty kill, we started to play. And, and all our guys got going, and, and we had a terrific second period, but we needed a spark to get back in the game. And Connor made a great play to, to, to Jimmy Clark coming off the, the bench. And, and, and then the rest, I just felt good. But as I told our guys, I, I sat on the bench the rest of the night because we were playing our tails off. And so was Omaha. And how many of these, you know, we were saying that 50% of any of these games going to overtime, I go, let's try to find a way not to have it going overtime. So Nelly did it, um, and and our older guys tonight, particularly you know with closer Nelly Nevers Brodzinski, uh, and that experience I I really believe that we've had the last few years in in these big games really came through, and kind of teach our young guys something. So uh, I'm real proud of our guys tonight. Excellent, thank you, Coach. Now we're going to open the floor to questions for the student athletes first. Uh, again, please raise your hand to request the microphone. Down front. Mark Oldman in Dakota News Now. This is for Nelly. Uh, I just texted Phil Paquette and said, what did you think of that script I wrote? You had a ton of friends and family here tonight. I know this was special for your team and everything else, but how much cooler was it that you did this back on your home rink? Yeah, for sure. It was great to get the win. It was a great atmosphere, and uh, the crowd was really cheering on. Um, you know, it means a lot for, for the support from the community all the time, and I know I have it, and, you know, it makes it a lot easier to go out there and play. Jess Myers from the Rink Live. Jackson, you've talked a lot before about the communication on your line. What was said between you and Bryce on, on those two plays? Were you talking to each other? Were you yelling for the puck? Just tell us about that. You know, on the, on the second one, I was kind of lucky. He had some options, so I just presented my stick, and, you know, he made, he made the play, and... Uh, you know, he's just, he's just a good player, and he knows when, when to make the right play and where the right play is, and he made two of those tonight. D Dylan Logs from Gopher Hole. Connor, just talk about that second period after the, the penalty kill. It seemed like you guys had about, like, eight shots in a row and just away you went. At one point, it was, like, 18 to four of the shots, but then you guys just quickly turned it over. Yeah, I think we got a lot of momentum from those big penalty kills. Uh, we got some absolutely great killers up front uh, that kind of log all those minutes, and... Every time they do their job, they give us a big spark, and that led uh, to our success going forward. And we just had a good feel about us after that kill. I know we gave one up, but one in seven is pretty good. So uh, we were just excited about the kill, and it, it gave us a good spark to continue momentum. Randy Johnson, Minneapolis, start to you. Connor, you had the last player with, with the extra attacker mm -hmm. on the ice. What was your thoughts when he sent that down the ice? I was just really happy it got out. I would have been a little bit more stressed, but uh, once it got out, it was a big relief. There was a lot of emotion that came with that game, so I uh, just kind of took a deep breath, and then the, the happiness kind of set in there. Uh, Jackson, Trent Singer with the Rink Live. Can you walk me through the game winner there? It looked like a redirect. Yeah, you know, their, their guy fell down, and Bryce was reloading over the puck and came up with it, and we had a three-on-one, and I just presented my stick, and the D took away the pass, and Bryce made a nice play to Get a tip. Eric Vigo, go for puck live. Jackson, you were out there for a shift probably like a minute 37 at the end of the game. What's your mindset as you battle through that long shift? Don't get overextended and don't get beat back to the net. Uh, stay in front of your guy and the puck comes and you block it. Try to get it out.
Jackson, just you, tell me about almost being a you know a shot blocker there that last minute. It looked like you were getting in the way of a lot of stuff. Are you almost cognizant of trying not to screen your own goalie, or how you, how do you approach that? Yeah, you know you gotta you gotta find that happy medium where you're you're putting yourself in position to block the shot, but you're also not getting overextended to where if you don't block and it gets through, then you still have to be with your guy. And you know it's, it comes down to it at the end of all these games, it's every every block shot counts and. You know, every every chance that the puck doesn't get to the net is another chance they don't score. So, this is for both of you guys. Um, I realize this isn't a home ring for either team. Omaha's not any further away than you guys, about the same distance. But it sort of felt like it was a home crowd for you guys. When you're down one to nothing, you're being outshot nineteen to four. The other team has all the momentum. How important is that crowd to keep you going and keep pushing you guys? Connor, you go first. All right. Yeah, yeah. We have such a great support system uh, in Minnesota, and we know that our fans uh, travel super well. Uh, we saw it last year in Tampa and Fargo, and we we knew they'd travel well here. And uh, the spark they give us is something you can't you can't find elsewhere. And we're just so fortunate to have such a great support system. Yeah, you know they're also fans, and they're also hockey fans. They know the game of hockey, so when when you make a play, they recognize it. You know, if it's a block shot, you get the puck out of the zone. You're you're playing defense, and you. Are able to get it out. They they know what how much that means to us, and you know they would know when to cheer and when not to. Jess, last question, Mr. Nappins. The major penalties over your down one nothing. How angry are you guys at that point? For either player, I mean, was it was it okay with stuff this nonsense? Let's play. Yeah, you know, it's just just kind of a tough bounce in these regional games. You know, some things some it can happen so fast, but you know, staying staying emotion, staying within your emotions and. Not getting too high, not getting too low, and that's something we talked about all year as a leadership group and keeping up the young guys and just making sure they're still in the game. Excellent. We'll kindly dismiss the student athletes. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. We'll turn up the floor now for questions. Happy birthday again. That was kind of a nice night tonight, huh? Yeah. Uh, you, you play a really good team tomorrow. Um, how hard is it to quickly put this, or I should say Saturday, how hard is it to quickly put this kind of an emotional win behind you, knowing you got to be you to play next? We also played a very good team tonight, too. And and we knew it was, and I, I'll back that up, too. Like, when we, when we saw that draw and you make the calls to our friends, this was not going to be a fun night because they are a tough, heavy team. And, and... You know, we like to get up and go a little bit more, and we had to play a heavy game. You ask me about BU, ask me tomorrow. I want to enjoy this one and watch some film, honestly. And, uh, you know, we saw them last year. We know they got a ton of talent. They're one of the best players in the country. Um, uh, I'll have a better answer. I'll have a better answer tomorrow. We're just darn happy we're playing in that, in that Saturday. The three big fifth-year guys that came back all played pretty important roles tonight. Just how much did you envision this at the end of April when those guys said, oh, we're going to give it one more run? Well, uh, you know, I, t I, t I told you, that I'll, I'll repeat the one story because, I mean, sometimes by the kids, you know, by a young guys senior year, you know, they're, they're kind of not looking at the coach sideways, you know. But now guys coming back for fifth year, which we hadn't done. It was early in the year when Nellie and I were walking in the building together. It was really early, and, I, and I'll repeat it. You guys have heard it. I said, Nellie, is it weird to be back? And he, and he goes, Coach, it would be weird if I wasn't here. And, and uh, that was the coolest answer that, that you got. And, and it tells you how big-time college hockey is when you see so many kids that, when they have that chance, will come back and do it. And those three have meant the world to us. And... Um, can't and talk about to our senior like in the in between periods in between the first and second like nevers like he took over the locker room and we're we're just listening through the door and that, that kid is a winner um and that's what you need like as a coach you sit back and you need the players to step forward you know and and that's what we had tonight i just put my hands in my pocket because we started playing and then you let it go so we had so many guys that played well tonight Bob, how impressed were you, were you with the team that they did not get the rate during that, that tough, tough stretch? I I was worried because sometimes with us, as you've seen, when when you know when when something negative happens or you get challenged, sometimes because we want to we want to run, 
we stayed in the moment. You know, and 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 our our penalty kill, our penalty kill has been very strong all year. But starts with your goalie, and, and we had to find a way to fight through it. And then we needed to play, and we did, and it was good. Mike Patterson, Omaha World Herald, Coach. What was your level of concern uh, not having played in almost two weeks? Um. I had concern, but we, we've kind of had, you know, in our league, we play a three week playoff and won one and we got knocked off. Uh, so we've done it the last three years where we've had a little time and we had a buy at the end of this year and it, it, it's a challenge. I, I, you really, I did feel that like they played five games in, in under two weeks and that, that was something I thought in the second period that, that might have taken effect because that's also very difficult. You know, the emotional high that they went through to, to, to beat Colorado College to get, and then they locked themselves into the tournament. I mean, that, that's an emotional ride home from, from doing that. And then to get into the, because I've lived in that league and I've lived in that spot before. But he got his guys ready to play tonight. And so I was concerned, but just like the last two years, we got better as the region. And we're hoping we got one more of those in us. Hey, Tom Schoenberg, Minnesota Daily. What was it like seeing Jimmy Clark hit that uh, first goal for you guys on the board after having that scoring drought coming into tonight's game? It, it was, like, honestly, it was awesome because Jimmy's going to – he's a heck of a player, and, you know, he kind of had that little magic going early in the year, and then I don't think he has a goal the second half. And he's such a good player, and, he, and he's going to continue to – he's going to be a big-time college player. And I think we, we were – Happy for the team, but equally happy for him that, that, that he got rewarded in a big game. That what pays off down the line in, in future for players like that. That's not a fluke because he, he's a major talent. Eric Vigo, go for Puck Live. Bob, after the major penalty, it seemed like your guys were make better plays off of all battles. What, what changed? Well, we started, we started digging in. And that, I mean that, and then you could feel it on the bench. Started getting some chances. Um, um, Hugi put one off the post. You know, in, in, in second period, we could view it like our guys. And if you notice on the bench, all our guys were standing. We're not. A, I usually make our guys sit and rest. They stood for over ten minutes. They were. They just. They got their juices flowing. They're athletes. And. Uh, good outcome. Uh, uh, just you talked a little bit about it earlier about Connor Firth, but just his game tonight and seeing him first, he had a couple, set up a couple of real good chances, and then the second he just continued. Yeah. On. You know, I, he's another one of those guys that, that we got a handful of these sophomores that, you know, we haven't gone in the portal in two years and to bring in an older guy, and that we're going to some, at some point, but we kind of keep grooming these young guys that, that, and they, we've seen Connor this year really come into his own. Like we kind of, Hughie's had a terrific second half as a junior, you know, but Brody Lamb and Connor Kurth and, and, you know, they're going to be big time college players. And Jimmy Clark, they've kind of had to wait their turn, but they're starting to nudge themselves out in the lead a little bit. So um, he's, I love the kid. He's a terrific player and got a great heart. And, I want to thank Jackson. Yeah. Um, Really could have written a better script. But no, it was from just a few miles for him to do that. What could have been his last college game tonight? Yeah. For him to score those last two goals. What did that mean to you? Because you know he's been through a lot. Yeah. yeah, I know that. And I, I, I'll tell you one story because he was playing here in Sioux Falls when Scott Owens was a coach. Scott Owens was one of my best friends. And I took the job. And, and he had his struggles because he was young when he left. And, and Scott, he goes, don't get rid of him. He goes, you keep him. And um, I tip my hat to Scott because I, I, you know, when we have those close friends in our business, because he, he didn't have the big points and he is a ball player. He's an athlete. You know, he could pick up a baseball bat now and probably be in the minor league somewhere and, and heart and character. And he has been doing this for the last month and a half with us. Uh, one of the great coaching stories, those guys that give their heart to the program and to the kids, and he's one of them. Couldn't be more proud and happy for him.
and uh, he should get an NHL deal the way he's been playing the last two months. It's been scary good. Excellent. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate you. Thank you. Quick change.